Hey there everybody, my name is Chili, and welcome to the start of an epic journey. Are you hype? You goddamn should be, because programming is fucking awesome. It's like, uh, it's like the ultimate Legos, man. Or I don't know, like Minecraft or whatever you kids are into, I don't know. What I'm trying to say is that programming gives you the freedom to take something right out of the old dome piece and make it real. I'm not just talking about making games and demos. You can make all sorts of dumb bullshit. The sky is the limit. Now people have this image that programmers are some kind of tech wizard geniuses. And it's an image I like to spread, mostly because it makes me look better. But here's a little secret between you and me. Programming is pretty goddamn easy to learn. Now, but Chili, isn't C++ supposed to be hard? Yeah, it's hard. You know what else is hard? My motherfucking dick because I've injected it with pure C++ every single day for the last 15 years. Listen, if you want high octane computing power, nothing beats C++. Well, uh, Chili, actually, Java is uh, just as fast as... Yeah, okay. Maybe you got a point there. Huh, I guess that's why most high-performance software is written in, you know, Java or C Sharp. Oh no, wait, it isn't. Don't fucking piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. Java and C Sharp are great languages and they have their places. But don't deceive yourself about their performance compared with C++. Now, I'm not going to lie. C++ can be daunting for the beginner because it's a powerful language with a ton of features. It's easy to get overwhelmed if you approach it in the wrong way. But that's where good old Chili comes in. I have a system and it works. You don't have to take my word for it. So here's the long term plan for the whole Chili C++ sex god program subject to future change. There won't be any diploma when you finish. But maybe I'll finish in a McDonald's napkin, roll it up, and send it to you for graduation. Now the beginner series is mainly about learning the C++ language. We'll also do some basic graphics bullshit with sprites and of course make a few shitty games. As we progress beyond the beginner series, we're going to focus less and less on the programming language itself and more and more on topics like the actual architecture of code, graphics theory, math, etc. Finally culminating in a full body orgasm of hardware accelerated awesomeness. Let's talk about what you need. You're going to need Windows 7 and you're going to need a graphics card that supports at least D3D9 features. Any card made in the last 10 years should do the trick. What you won't need is any programming experience or any advanced math skills. I will explain every new topic as it comes up and assume that You know nothing, Jon Snow. Now, if you have some previous experience with C++, or even just programming in general, you might want to use the wiki to skip or skim the stuff that you already know. Also consider setting the playback speed to 1.25 or 1.5 times. Alright, let's install some software. What you're going to do is you're going to go down in the description and you're going to click the link to the wiki page for this tutorial. Tutorial Zero's wiki page. And here, you're going to find the links to download the software. Now, I recommend that you go through the wiki page and not just search for it yourself, because if the installation uh, procedure changes in the future, I can write that information in here. I can't change the video, but I can change this page. So make sure you go here and just check, read over the page, make sure that there's been no uh, changes, no updates. So first thing you want to do is click on the download for Visual Studio 2015 and you'll get this page here from Microsoft. You're going to keep the file. You're going to run the file. It'll probably take a little while to initialize here. It's no problem. I'd like to just say that if you want to try to use other IDs like code blocks or Xcode, it's possible, but it's going to make your life more difficult, right? This, these tutorials are set up assuming you're using Visual Studio. And if you try to use something else, you're basically on your own. Uh, in my opinion, when you're de developing for Windows and DirectX, Microsoft bullshit, your best experience is going to be using Microsoft tools. So we're going to click Next here. And there's a few things you got to change. You can't just go with the standard because in the standard, this is going to be unchecked. Visual Studio is not part of the uh, standard setup. 
the plebs don't program in C++, so you gotta check that shit. You don't need Windows XP, you don't need MFC. Keep the common tools. Now, the other, all this other stuff is optional, but down here in common tools, you want to click on Git for Windows. All right, you're going to click Next, you're going to install that. I'm not going to install it because I already got it. All right, once you got all that done, then you're going to come back to the wiki page and you're going to download the framework. The framework is just a bunch of code that is going to make our lives easier a lot easier. It's going to get us going with graphics right from day one. So you're going to take this folder here, this is inside the zip file, and you're going to extract it somewhere. I'm going to put it on my desktop. You can put it wherever you want. It's a free country unless you live in North Korea. In which case, well, how, how are you even watching this? Are you Kim Jong-un? I'm a big fan. So yeah, you're going to extract this and then you can open it up and check it out. Now, before we dive in here, we got to have a little talk. And the talk is about people in the last time I did this. Some people, not very many, but a, uh, a small but vocal minority were like, Chili, what the fuck is all this bullshit framework? This is not what I wanted. You should not start with a framework. You should start with an empty project. And I'm like, dude, you got to chill out. It's not a big deal. People get, they freak out. They think, you know, if I'm using this framework, they're going to get locked into the framework and I'm not going to be able to do anything unless it's with the framework and urgh, framework. No, dog. Here's the deal. The framework is just a very light wrapper that will take care of some bullshit that you don't want to be dealing with when you're a beginner. You don't want that bullshit because it's going to fuck you up and you're going to get discouraged and you're going to give the fuck up. Now, the thing about the framework here is it's an accelerator. It lets you focus on learning with graphics and it lets you manipulate the pixels on the screen directly. So you learn, you get intimate, carnal knowledge of how graphics works. And because the end goal of this series is to work with Direct 3D directly. So we don't want to use SDL, SFML, Unity. Uh, those would all just detract from what we're trying to do. There would just be a lot of shit to learn. The framework is basically, I made it. I made it special for you. And it's just a very light wrapper. The minimum that we need to get the job done. I'm not telling you to use my framework to make games. I'm trying to tell you that when you're ready, you won't have to. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at what we got here in the framework. It's got a bunch of files here. These uh, .h and .cpp files, these are the source files. These are the files that contain our code for our program. And you can open them up. I mean, just, uh, let's see here, open with notepad. They're just, source files are just text files like any other text file. There's nothing super special about them. It's just text. The only difference is, is the text is written in such a way that a program called a compiler can take these source files and go nom 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 and poop out an executable for us to run on a computer. So we go back into the root and we double click on this file. It's a solution file. Now this contains information about our project. It contains, it tells the project what files are going to go into the executable and how they should be built. What we want to do is we want to build this motherfucker. Oh, but first things first, you might notice that if you just installed Visual Studio, yours looks a little different than mine. And it's not a big deal. You just got to change a few settings if you like. So one of the settings is you go into tools, you go options, and under color theme, you go dark. I like the dark color theme. You can pick a different one if you like, doesn't really matter. Now the other thing is you've got all these numbers here that show you, you know, the, what line number every line has. And that might be useful for you when you're starting out following along with me on the video. So if you want to turn that on, again, you go to options, you go down to the text editor and you click on C, C++. And here you can turn on or off line numbers. There's a whole bunch of different options in here, formatting, but we won't get into that right now. All right, now let's actually build this motherfucker. To build it, we're gonna go to the build menu and we're gonna click on build solution. And in the end, you wanna see something like this, build one succeeded. 
you don't want any failures. Uh, let me show you something else. If you try to build it again when you've already built it, it's going to say something like this. Zero succeeded and you're going to be like, oh shit, this is bad. But no, it's not bad. Because here it says one up to date, which means that the last time you built it, that's those files are still there. And so we don't have to rebuild this shit. Nothing has changed. Visual Studio is smart enough to figure out that you haven't made any changes. And so you don't need to rebuild. See, Papa, you too smart. All right. Now, when you want to run your program, you can click here and start debugger. Or you can go down here and start without debugging. It doesn't matter. Just click something with a play button on it. And that'll give you this window. Just a uh, just your standard black screen. It's got nothing on it. Just black. Now you might be saying, well, if I don't want to build an executable with Visual Studio if I have to run it from Visual Studio all the time. What if I want to give it to a friend or something? That's bullshit. Does my friend have to have Visual Studio? No. Right click on the, uh, the project here, the project node, and go down to open folder in File Explorer. And that'll open up the folder for the project, which is right here, the engine folder. And if you click, you can click out of it and click on release. This is in the solution folder. And here is your executable. You can double click that, same thing. So here's the executable, you can give it to friends, you can pass it around, it's all good. That's just the folder, again, that's the folder where we extracted all the files. So if it's on your desktop, it's gonna be in here, in release, there it is. And that's it, that is all you got to uh, building a solution. Now to be an a little bit of a shame to end this video without typing in even a little bit of code, even though this is only a setup. So what we're going to do is you go into the uh, Solution Explorer here, click on game.cpp. This is the file that we're going to be working in the most, especially in the beginning. Uh, and it's where you're, you're going to put the logic for your game. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to Compose Frame here. And inside of these squiggly uh, brackets, these braces, hit return, get ourselves a new line here, and I want you to type in what I've got here. So gfx dot capital P U T P I X E L open parentheses and inside here we're going to type some numbers. So let's uh, let's go with 100, 100, and 255, 255, 255. And at the end, very important, put a semicolon. So here's our first line of code. What does it do? Well, let's build a solution. Notice that again it builds, but it only builds game.cpp because that's the only file that changed. And success. And then we'll go start without debugging. And here we go. Looks about the same, except, oh, what do we have here? Little Mr. Pixel up in the top left corner-ish region. So there you go. You type in the code put pixel and it puts a pixel on the screen. Wonders never cease. Now I've got a little challenge for you. I want you to try to figure out what all of these numbers control. They all have their own job here in putting a pixel on the screen. And I want you to play around with these numbers. Try to figure out what these numbers do. I will explain what they do in the beginning of the next lesson. Don't worry about it. But I want you to give it a shot and see if you can discover some information out for yourself. Because when you, when you boil it all down, that's what programming is about. It's about figuring shit out for yourself. And that's going to do it for today. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and a comment. It'll help this video out for uh, for the good old SEO purposes. Drive some traffic here. Get people interested. Uh, if you have any problems, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the forum. There's a link below and the link will link to the wiki page for the forum. It'll tell you how to use the forum and to communicate. YouTube is not, you can leave comments, I read all your comments, but it's not the best place to troubleshoot uh, programming problems. 
So you can catch me on the forums. Uh, links below. You can also catch me uh, maybe on Discord. I've got a Discord for Planet Chili. And you can also follow me on Twitter if you want. I don't... I mean, I tweet randomly about weird Japanese stuff sometimes, so you might like that. But yeah, that's about it, and I will see you soon with another installment of Programming with Chili.